you've been reading, my name's Ronnie Austin. I was asked to start the show off, so here I am. What a great day. I drove an hour and a half to get here from my home up in Daytona Beach, Mormon Beach. Life has been great, you know. I've been very blessed. Uh, before we get started, i got to tell you quickly, the first one of these I came to years ago was in Jacksonville, and something that impressed upon me immediately was that we started the meeting with prayer. So folks, we're going to start this meeting with a prayer. Yep. All right? If you bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of being here as a retriever family. We thank you for the business that you've given us. Father, we just ask that you bless each and every heart and soul here today. Bless the speakers that are going to be speaking, that you give them the words of wisdom and the gift, Lord. And we just ask that you bless this entire event. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I claim that. So. Tony. Hey. And. Okay, you. Take his phone away. <laughs> you, come up here with the phone right now. <laughs> what part of turn off the phone did you not get? Tony. Come on. Okay, one more time. Did everybody turn their phone off? Yeah. Or put it on at least mute? One more time. Always got to be one, right? Always. Always got to be one. So, uh, I was asked to kind of tell you my story. A little bit of it. Some of you know it. Some of you don't. But I wanted to start off with this. This is straight out of the Bible. I have three books that I'm very fond of. And they were all written, allegedly, by the same guy. Depends on what camp you're in. But King Solomon was the richest and wisest man of all time, biblically speaking, and he wrote a book called Ecclesiastes, and in chapter 3 it says, there is a time for everything, yes. a time unto heaven, right? So I'm going to read a little bit of this, because it applies right now. A time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, Time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Yes, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them up. But you see what it says? A time. A time. Well, this is the time. If you're in the retriever business, this is the time, folks. Right. I've been around for a dozen years, and it's not going to get better than it is right now. And I'll get to that part in a second. But here's the good stuff. Verse 12 and 13. Love this. Love this. Okay. It says, I know that there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. And 13 says that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. That is the gift of God. Amen. All right. Enough on the preaching. So, my story in a short window that I've got, I'll give you a little history on me, some credentials, but I'm really a musician. I play guitar, I sing, that's my, my gift song. There's a songwriter sitting right there, you guys don't know it. But yep, there's, there's gifts in here. Brian plays a beautiful piano. Rich is playing guitar. Yep, and you're never too old to start, no matter what it is. But that was my early gift. I didn't think it was a gift, but I guess it is. So I'm a musician who turned into a sales guy. Now, just like you and just like life, I've had some ups and downs like that time, like Solomon says. So here's the short ones. I can't give you the whole window, don't have enough time. But I can tell you this much. I have been broke two times. And when I say broke, I mean here's broke, and I am down here. Okay, so there's broke, and I'm down here. You get that? Right? Two times. I have been homeless once. And I was homeless with a pregnant wife, eight months, and a two-year-old boy. And I didn't have a home. No joke. 
Okay? So I don't know where I'm finding you this morning, because I know you all got a story, but this is my story. This is a short piece of it. Was it easy? No. Was it tough? Oh my God. By the grace of God, I had some friends, acquaintances, that let Jody and I stay in a spare bedroom with a blow-up air mattress that shrank every night. For two weeks, we stayed there. And then a friend of mine, Dr. Chuck Maxwell, from Fayetteville, North Carolina, sent me a $1,000 check and said, boy, I was 30, 30, 31 years old. 31? Okay? So, that's kind of where I come from, you see. I don't come from money. I was raised on a dirt farm in North Carolina. Don't come from any money. Now, by the grace of God, I stand here before you today and say, you know what? Because of Retriever, I got a little money. Yeah. Can I get a witness on that? <laughs> so, so, I don't have a care in the world, quite honestly. The pressure's off. The money's good. I'm, I'm extremely solvent. Like some of you other folks here in the room, life is good by the grace of God. All right? So, how did I get in this business? Well, in 2009, does anybody know what was going on in 2009? We had the Great Recession, quotation marks, and 85 million people were struggling in America, and I was one of the 85 million. Now, if you were in the retriever business in 2009, you were not struggling. Right. You didn't even know there was a recession. Right? Right? Because rates are like, uh, do you know there's a recession? No. So, yeah. So, July 2009, this guy comes knocking on my door. His name's Bubba Gabe. Here's Bubba's presentation. You ready? In Bubba's voice. Hi, I'm Bubba. <laughs> I'm with the retriever. I'm here to read your credit cards. That's a pitch, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, come on. I, I, Bubba, can you come back in 30 minutes? We're going to finish this lunch we just got in this big, dusty warehouse. And come back and see me in 30 minutes. I'll listen to you. Because I did have a merchant account. So Bubba came back in a half an hour. Jody and I went to this 100 square, you know, 10 by 10 square room that had a desk and a little air conditioner about that big. And we stood in there. Bubba looked at my merchant statement. And he says, well, I can help you. Let me back up just a little bit. I'm struggling, guys. I'm bleeding five to ten grand a month. I have inventory. I have floor plans. I have issues. I have a deputy sheriff serving me foreclosure papers. It's not a pretty situation. This is 2009. Okay? And Bubba says, well, you know, we can help you with this, we can help you with that. And I've been praying, God, could you send me something? A little, a little help would be great, God. I kept telling Jody every day, tomorrow's going to be a better day. Time, right? To everything. There's a season, time. So, I listened to Bubba, and I said, Bubba, i got three questions for you. Here's the first one. How long have you been doing this? Ah, about five years, something like that, four or five. You got a family, Bubba? I do. Now picture this. My wife is sitting at a desk, Bubba's standing here, and I'm standing here, about five feet away. And I don't know where this came from, but this question pops out of my mouth. Bubba, do you make a residual doing this? And I get this pause, you know that, you know the pause, right? Should I answer that question or not? Pause. And he goes, well, as a matter of fact, I do. I said, great, I want to go to work for your company. And he says, are you kidding? Jody goes, no, he's not. <laughs> so, that's how it started, guys. The, then it gets interesting. I said, Bubba, I don't know. I, zero due diligence on my end. This is called trusting in the Lord, folks. The, I didn't check on Retriever. I didn't try to see who Brian Gamster was. Didn't have a clue who Rich Norton was. But guys, I rode for two days with Bubba. 
Listen to this. Bubba, we rode from 9 to noon at lunch. What do you think? I like this. Um, I'd like to ride with you again, Bubba. So we ride from 9 to noon. Bubba has long work hours. Can you figure that out? I don't know what happened after, after that. But from 9 to noon, we had lunch. And he says, what do you think? I said, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I said, I just want to write out what it is you say. It was a little bit better, you know, when he when I wrote it out. But I copied his speech. And I memorized it. So that when I walked in, I could walk in to Sean and go, Hi, how you doing today? My name's Ronnie Austin. I'm with Retriever with a member of Bank for Visa MasterCard, and yada yada yada. And I had it down like that, man. I could say it. And I walked in and I do that. Well, the first merchant that says, Oh yeah, sure. And he goes and gives me a statement and hands it to me. Oh, God. Uh, so I got the statement, right? So then I, I said, well, I'm going to go down to the end of the counter down there, and I'm going to uh, just kind of put, do some cipher in there, you know. And I stared at that thing, and I stared at that thing, and I stared at it some more. And, and finally, it's like it, it, it came up into my face, and I went, oh. I, I understand. It did. And I went, oh. So I scribbled it all out, gave it back to the guy. Here's what he says. Well, uh, I'll give it to the owner when he gets back in a month. <laughs> <laughs> I probably spent 45 minutes to an hour at the end of that sales counter, you know, trying to figure this thing out. So that was my, my deal, man. You know, I went out. I still had my car business, by the way, when I started this business. So July to December, I wrote 35 deals part-time. Let's do the math, that's five or six a month, right? Part-time, part-time, because I still had my car business. I was an independent car dealer, just so you guys know. Yeah, one of the used car guys. <laughs> uh, so I, call, I, I met Rich, this is funny, because you'll appreciate this, Bob. I, I met Rich, he called me, he goes, hey, Bubba's not with us anymore, he's moving on to some greener pasture, Bubba went into some telemarketing thing. Rich called me and he says, you know, you're with me, and I want to meet you, so I meet him up in uh, St. Augustine. And here's the funny, you want to hear funny? He opens the trunk of his car, I forgot what he gave me, but he gave me some, like a little pitch book or some stuff to add to it, and, uh, and he shuts the trunk and he says, by the way, um, <coughs> You, you, car, you car people don't generally do real well with this business. <laughs> okay? Boy, was he and he said, boy, huh? So, so anyway, um, we get back in the car, we're heading back home, and Jody goes, he obviously doesn't know you, does he? I don't know, I guess not, baby. So, long story short, I jumped in, wrote a few more deals. In December, I called Rich and I said, Rich, because guys, I'm still bleeding. I'm making a little money now, but I'm still bleeding. I called Rich and I said, can I make $100,000 next year? That was just kind of a number I could reference in my head, because I'm bleeding 100 right now, so if I could just get back to even, 100 more would be a wow, right? Here's what Rich says. Well, if you can't make $100,000 next year, if you go full time, something's wrong. That's all I needed. And that was the word of encouragement. Those were the words, right? It's all about the words, guys. So, what did I do? I told my wife, my son, I'm closing business. We're gonna phase it out. I'm done January 2nd. These feet are hitting the ground and I'm never looking back. Never. And guys, I haven't looked back. So I'll just tell you, this is being transparent, okay? Not braggadocious, but I made over three hundred thousand dollars that year. I was in the president's club. <laughs> Brian Kempster was kind enough to give me seventy-five hundred dollars and six and seven nights for staying in Puerto Rico. Rich gave me another night. Life is good. I went from broke as hell to all of a sudden I got some money. And then here's the best part. I had one terminal to sell called a VX510. No point of sales, no clovers, no nothing. Rich remembers this. And, and over 300 grand, guys, with one terminal. 
Because I got out and knocked on every door that was available without, and now, did I get rebuttals? Yes. Did I get cussed at? Did I get thrown out? Yes, I did. Here's the moral of the story. You're going to get rejection. You're going to get told no. But I'm telling you today, I'm standing here going, just keep doing it. Yes. Yep. So, I have walked the beaches of the world with that man, that man, that man, that man, that man right there who I'm going to introduce to you right now. It has been the journey of a lifetime, folks. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here once again for the 12th time. Can I get a witness? It's yeah. great. Yeah. So, without further ado, the man who's made it possible for all of us to be here, who has really created a family, it doesn't get any better than this, people. I don't know what businesses you might be looking at or thinking about or maybe investing in. That's all good. That's all good. But your asset is right here, right now, with Brian Kamsher. Come on up, Brian.